So that was in 1984. You know, the next big step was Wing Commander, and that was in 1990. So we're talking about six years here. You know, what was going on in those years? So between the release of King's Quest and Wing Commander, Sierra had really hit their stride with their adventure games and really changed the landscape of PC gaming. You know, they weren't the only ones putting out adventure games, but they were, you know, they were known for it and they really influenced what the rest of the publishers were doing at the time. It's important for us to look at the market at this time to see why Wing Commander was such a phenomenon. Let's start with Origin, the developers of Wing Commander. With Richard Garriott at the helm, Origin's flagship series was Ultima. It defined computer RPGs and had been for the last decade to this point. At the time Wing Commander was coming out, they had released Ultima 5 and were about to move on to 6, which was one of the major leaps in this venerable series. We'll talk more about Chris Roberts and the work culture over there later on. The other big developer at the time was, of course, Sierra. We've already talked about them, but it's hard to understate their influence. They created a genre overnight and continued to dominate until it all came crashing to a halt almost 20 years after they began. LucasArts had just released the first title in the excellent Seeker of Monkey Island games. Their biggest games wouldn't really be coming out for several years, though. Console gaming in the late 80s was a force to be reckoned with. Nintendo was a cultural phenomenon back then, and its leading mascot, Mario, 
has become one of the most famous fictional characters in history. But PC gaming has never gained that sort of mind share in the public. These were the waning years of the NES, with the Super NES coming out stateside in 91. But to many, these were the strongest titles of the entire catalog. Depending on where you sat, in front of your computer, or in front of your TV, you were in for a completely different gaming experience, and we'll go more into that later. During the time of the NES, though, PC and console gaming were two completely different entities. This was famously, or rather infamously, pointed out by Roberta Williams. She claimed that she designed games for more educated, affluent gamers. Although, she was more pointing out the fact that computers were much more expensive, not in as many homes, and especially in the case of Nintendo, catered to both children and adults. In any case, the divide between the types of games seen on either was larger than it is now. You didn't see platformers on PCs, and you didn't see simulators on consoles. There would be exceptions, of course, in ports, but generally you just didn't see the genres switching sides. 